right, welcome back. Let's keep rolling. You know, when when politicians lie, you'd think they lie about things we couldn't instantly check up on. Biden is out there saying that inflation was at 9% when he took office. Well, you know, RNC Research, great account on Twitter, kind of side-by-side of that claim with his claim that no one's worried about inflation from three years ago. Talk of inflation. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. No one's talking about this great, great deal. So, again, if it turns out that what I've done so far, what we've done so far, is a mistake, it's going to show. Bringing down inflation was 9% when I came to office. 9%. My next guest is the National Political Director for the National Federation of Republican Women, Nikki Beaver. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, um, James Carville, I think, coined one of the political truisms of the modern era. It's the economy stupid, right? And is there any more a kitchen table issue than the price of food? No, there's not. And that is what most voters are going to think about when they get to the ballot box. They're not going to think about, you know, the good old grandpa figure that we've got who likes ice cream. They're going to think about how expensive ice cream is, how expensive eggs are, how expensive it is to feed their family, how expensive it is to fill up their gas tank. All of those have gone up astronomically between 20 to 50 percent. And people are feeling that. And that is what they're going to think about at the ballot box. I I don't know. I, I don't know who is advising Biden because he said that more than once, that inflation was at 9% when he took office. The inflation rate when Donald Trump was president was somewhere between 0.1% and 1.4%. It took a steep turn up shortly after Joe Biden got inaugurated. But you, you don't have to be a political junkie, you know, a deep dive reader of politics like you read the, you know, the Hill or Roll Call every day to know that. That's as simple as Googling it. And anyone who Googles it will go, well, wait, that's not true. And even if you don't Google it, you are feeling it. You know prices are artificially high. Your wages aren't buying nearly as much. You're asking yourself, how is it that I used to fill the back of my vehicle with uh, four, five, six bags of groceries, but for the same price, I'm only getting two? Yeah, that's right. And You know, he may think the American people are stupid, but we're not that stupid, right? We all can feel the pressure of all these prices going up. And yes, inflation is going up and it has come down a little bit, but the prices haven't come down. People are still feeling this and they can try to do all of their, you know, all their policy changes for show. I mean, it's not going to work. The American people are not stupid and we are all feeling this and he can try and do all this magic. But uh, at the ballot box, all that it's going to come down to is their wallets, their safety and security, and and these kitchen table issues. That's what Americans are worried about. It's their day-to-day life. It's their bread and butter. It's what they're going to think about. I remember the term NASCAR dads. Maybe we should have pantry moms, right? (laughs) That that would be a good one. Exactly, They they, they had one. they They had security moms a few years back. I don't remember which election cycle that was. It might have been 08 or 2012, but I think pantry moms. Uh, You got to ask yourself, can I fill my pantry? What's in the pantry? What am I feeding my children? And to be honest, dad's got to ask the same thing, right? If you've got two people working or one breadwinner and a stay-at-home mom, like you said, that is the ultimate kitchen table issue, food and fuel. Absolutely. If it's, you know, a struggle to get to work every day, if it's a struggle to feed your family, those are the things that people are going to think about. And that is you know, they can, the Democrats can try to make this election about abortion or, or women's rights, but that is not what people are worried about right now. Abortion is a very, you know, important topic, but we're worried about the border. We're worried about all these people that are coming across illegally. What are their intentions? Do we know who they are? They're coming over. I mean, I think we're up to almost 15 million illegal immigrants that have crossed the border. They're committing crimes. Women can't even go out and exercise without the fear of being brutally murdered. And uh, and that's that is what people are going to think about. Abortion is an important issue. These women's rights are very important. And, and I think the women have truly, truly been activated for this election. And it's going to come down to the suburban women vote. All these demographics are going up for Trump. We see them every day. 
women are not afraid of Trump like the Democrats try to portray. We need someone who is who has a lot of strength and who leads with strength. He provided us peace with foreign policy. I mean, there is just no comparison and people are not stupid and people have really, really come around to see what the real issues are and what real real leadership looks like. And the only person that's going to bring us out of this is Donald Trump. If it, Look, I, I'm not denying that. If the suburban... If suburban women have the power to flip this election or decide this election, maybe four years ago, look, you don't like the Trump persona. Okay. I do, but let's say you don't. (laughs) In the suburbs, you don't, what's different than the city is that you don't have the overabundance of government run transportation. Most moms in the suburbs have their own vehicle usually an SUV. You, the grocery shopping and the dropping, go for, like right now, I think my wife is taking my son to lacrosse uh, while I work. Um, that, if you look back 2017, 2018, 2019, pre-pandemic, 2020, even if you don't like Donald Trump, are you better off than you were four years ago? You could not like Trump and really think Joe Biden's a sweet man and still go, I can't vote for him again. I mean, as much as I hate how the 2020 election went, I think it has been a truly eye-opening experience to see what kind of failed leadership the Democrats have. They have no one better than Joe Biden, which is terrifying. And (laughs) I mean, it's just, uh, you see it in the polls. People understand. People don't focus on the mean tweets or his personality as much because things have gotten so bad. And that is going to reflect at the ballot box. And I am looking for a Reagan win. I agree with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.